OK, well, we're down at the Skanska offices to have a look at some wonderful rocks that have been dug up in the Weymouth Relief Road. The reason we're so excited about this is because, of course, we've got this beautiful exposure along the coast of some exciting geology that's been given world heritage status. But uh, we never really get to see what's in land. But the Weymouth Relief Road gives us an excellent opportunity because it basically slices through a massive part of Dorset's bedrock. From the Oxford, which is about 160. 165 million years old, right up through to the chalk, which is only about 60 million years old. So there's a massive amount of time represented in the rocks that have been sliced through. And lots and lots of fossils and things have been recovered from that, and uh, that's what's in front of me on the table here. And we've got a range of things. So starting at the top from the chalk, we get these weird looking things like this. Now this is the sort of thing that everybody might get quite excited about, because they think, ah, it's a bone, but unfortunately it isn't. The chalk is absolutely riddled with all sorts of burrows. And these branching burrows often get filled in with a hard material known as flint, which everybody normally knows what flint is. Um, and uh, that's what preserves these weird nodular uh, pieces of, uh, uh, of the burrows. So that's what that is. And you get these little round things like this as well. Now these could be sponges um, or coral inside occasionally, or just another part of a burrow. Um, but they also could be occasionally sea urchins, but they're a little bit more recognisable. Haven't got a sea urchin here to show you, but some have definitely been recovered. So that's the youngest, so that's about 60 million years old from the chalk. Working down from that, we take a bit of a time jump because there's something known as an unconformity underneath the chalk. There's a big lump of the geology missing. It was eroded out about 100 million years ago. But the next piece we see is something called the Purbeck beds. Now the Purbeck beds are lots of thin layers of rock, very changeable. They would have been laid down in swamps and lagoons about 140 million years ago. And this particular piece of rock here is something known as the cinder bed. And this is just one of the layers from the Purbeck, and this is absolutely full of uh, oysters. And that's basically what this layer of rock is made of, it's all oyster shells. Now other rocks in the Purbeck contain dinosaur footprints, but we didn't recover any of those. Uh, but they also find lots of insects, because of course these swamps would have been a great habitat for insects, flying insects. And we've had an abundance of insect material and also plant material recovered from certain layers of limestone in the Purbeck. So a real star attraction actually as part of these cuttings. And we're hoping to recover some more uh, later on when they uh, uh, re-excavate into the Purbeck to put in a cycle path. So we're all quite excited about that. So moving down from the Purbeck, underneath the Purbeck we've got the Portland Stone. Now of course the Portland Stone gets its name from the Isle of Portland. That's where the limestone is quarried for, for use in building stones. And uh, there's lots and lots of ammonites, big ammonites in the Portland Stone. And this is one just down here underneath me. So you can see the size of them. There's a few more underneath the tables. We did manage to recover quite a few. And there's fragments up here as well. They're quite big. They're known as Titanites. Um, sometimes they're known as Titanites giganteus, depending on the species. And I always think that's labouring the point a little bit, perhaps. But uh, yes, they are quite enormous. And um, some of them have been smashed up by the diggers. But then that's what you get when you've got a... How, how big are they? 70 tonne diggers, I think, working on this site. Uh, so yeah, we can't recover every single one, unfortunately. But we have recovered enough, which is which is we're really pleased about. And uh, these are the kind of spectacular fossils that will hopefully go on display in the museums eventually. So working back from the Portland, we get into the Kimridge clay. Now the Kimridge clay is very soft, muzzy material, very, very difficult to recover any fossils from that. So we don't really have any Kimridge material to show you, uh, but we did find the very end part of the jaw from something called an ichthyosaur. And that's a giant marine reptile, one of the big predators that would have been swimming around in the sea during the Kimridge, uh, Kimridgean times. Um, and then working back underneath the Kimridge, we've got the Corallian rocks. Now the Corallian section, again, is made up of all sorts of different layers. So there's sandstones, there's clays, and there's limestones of different kinds as well. And it's these rocks that we're hoping to keep exposed. And we did have some Corallian material here as well. And most of those are made up of these seashells. And these are called Trigonia seashells because of their triangular shape. And there's different types, but they're spectacular beds uh, where the Trigonia shells make up the entire rock. Um, and what, they're one of the layers that we're hoping to keep exposed and hopefully maybe even recover a piece and get it prepared so that all the shells will be, um, you'll be able to see every single one and that will go on display in a museum eventually as well. Other things that were recovered from the Corallian include an ammonite which has been uh, taken off by one of the scientists for further study and also a vertebra about this big uh, from another ichthyosaur but this would have been much older 
than the one that was recovered from the Kimbridge. And then right at the bottom, underneath the Corallian, and we only got pieces of this stuff, the Oxford clay pulled out when they put in some piling, so we didn't actually see any cuttings in this material, but we did get some really, really lovely pieces. Now the Oxford clay, again, is very soft. It would have been deposited at a time when the seabed was depleted in oxygen. So lots of lovely fossils come out of here. And you can see that this one um, is absolutely covered with all sorts of material. So the seashells covering it, fragments of ammonites, all sorts of lovely fossils. So really, really exciting stuff. And we collected an awful lot of material from the Oxford clay. And again, that's been taken off by the academics to be studied and labelled so we can get a really good sense of the kinds of fossils that we had existing here in the Oxford clay.